We've had this 2021 Volkswagen ID4 in our long-term fleet for about nine months and 6,000 miles now, which means that it'll still be a few months until we finalize our opinions and our overall efficiency numbers for this vehicle. But in that time, there's plenty we've learned about the ID4 and we can't wait to share it with you, so here we are. Now, unlike most of the other electric vehicles in our long-term fleet, we didn't purchase the ID4. It was actually loaned to us by Volkswagen so that we could perform a more detailed evaluation and live with it day to day. But first, if you're enjoying our videos, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're looking to sell your car, head over to edmunds.com slash sellmycar for an instant cash offer. The ID4 goes up against a very crowded field of contenders from the Tesla Model Y to the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and they're all similarly sized. But our ID4's as tested price of just over 41 grand gives it an interesting value proposition that its competitors can't really match. Part of the reason the as tested price is so low is that we purposely chose the cheapest ID4 that you can get. This is a single electric motor pro model, and this is actually the trim that we recommend in our review because for a base model, it's really well equipped. It comes with plenty of standard features and driving aids, such as lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control that works down to a stop, this 10 inch touchscreen, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, dual zone climate control, and advanced keyless entry. That's a lot of kit for not a lot of money. And what it's like to live with is a bit of a roller coaster. Our editors have found plenty of things to love about it, but several things that we definitely hate. Passionately. Most of the positive comments that we've gotten from our editors about the ID4 center around how it drives. So even though we opted for the single motor version, which does have less power than the all wheel drive version, we're big fans of how that power is delivered. So even though the ID4 doesn't have that really snappy electric acceleration that you'll get in vehicles like the Model Y or the Mustang Mach-E, both also members of our long-term fleet, we do like how the power builds. It almost feels a bit like you're driving a traditional gas car again in that you know you get off the line and the power kind of builds very naturally and that's to us a positive association. The ID4 will feel much more familiar to folks, especially those who don't have a lot of experience driving electric vehicles. But don't worry, the ID4 still has plenty of power for highway merges and passes, so you never feel like you're falling behind. The other things that we like about the ID4, the brake blend is very good. There's no weird transitions between regenerative and physical brakes. We're also big fans of the suspension tuning. It provides a comfortable ride without feeling floaty or disconnected. We also like the ID4's very tight turning radius. It's about 31 feet and that's much better than the Model Y's, which is about 40 feet. And that makes it a lot easier to do U-turns, to get around the city and to park the ID4. One of my personal favorite features of the ID4 is this gauge cluster. Now, it's not that big. It's a lot smaller than the really big kind of digital gauge clusters that we're seeing in a lot of other vehicles, but I don't mind it. I think those larger screens can actually be quite distracting, while this one is the exact opposite. It only shows you exactly what you need. It has maybe two or three views that are all really simple. And it's also mounted to the steering column, which I like because that means no matter where you set the steering wheel, you're able to see the whole screen. But this screen, this is where a lot of the problems start. The common thread among the problems that we've had with the ID4 come down to what I would call usability issues. Things that should be simple, that should really take no time or thought at all, end up being unnecessarily complicated. For example, the windows. This vehicle has four windows that you can roll up and down, but as you'll notice, there are only two buttons. So if I wanna roll down the rear windows, I actually have to press this button and then roll down the rears. And then if I wanna go back to the fronts, I have to hit that button again. It would kind of make sense to have four window buttons, everyone else has four window buttons, but not the ID4. The climate controls are also similarly hard to use. You actually have to hit this button and then the controls pop up in the screen. There isn't even an easy way to really change the temperature. It's these kind of touch sensitive buttons here below the screen, but they don't even work all the time. This is sort of symbolic of a bigger sort of Volkswagen design problem where they've taken a lot of buttons out of the cabin. In fact, the only physical controls that we can really find are for the windows and here to put the vehicle back in park. Everything else is kind of touch sensitive, even on the steering wheel. And we've discovered that these buttons, again, they don't always work and they're a bit hard to find, especially when you're driving. We really like the ID4 simplicity in its driving experience and its pricing and it's just too bad that philosophy didn't extend to the interior as well. The ID4's multimedia system has also given us problems, as seen in one of our previous comparisons. The control system for the ID4 is just bad. B-A-D, bad, there's no way around it. 
multiple testers have had lots of problems connecting their smartphones to the ID4. Both Apple and Android users alike. The wireless connectivity can be spotty, it sometimes cuts in and out. There was one time where I connected my phone and it actually locked up the entire system and I had to stop and restart the vehicle. Now the ID4, it isn't a static thing. It does get over the air updates from Volkswagen that should in theory fix some of these issues. And for me, when I had the ID4 again to prepare for this video, I actually thought the Android auto connectivity had been fixed until I got into the vehicle this morning and the audio wouldn't play. The ID4's multimedia system has gotten better in some ways. It does actually boot up quicker now thanks to one of those updates, but by no means is it fixed. Some of our other testers have also noted that some important switches don't get illuminated at night, which is kind of ironic considering that the car does come with ambient lighting that you can change to many different colors. So this volume slider here and these temperature controls don't light up at night, and if you're driving after dark, they can be very difficult to find. We asked a few of our other editors to also chime in with their experiences in the ID4, including one that unfortunately took place during a rare LA rainstorm. So there were lots of things that I liked about the Volkswagen ID4, but recently I had an experience that was hard to believe. So I took the ID4 home and parked it in my driveway. A few hours later, I came back out and all the windows were rolled down. I definitely didn't do that on purpose, but I found out later that it's a common thing with Volkswagens. If you hold down the unlock button on the key fob, all the windows were rolled down. Now I must've done that on accident from inside the house, but I definitely didn't do it on purpose because it was raining that night. So for hours, water just poured inside the car and the entire interior was soaked. And thank goodness I didn't have any valuables in the car at the time. During the length of our year long test of the Volkswagen ID4, I spent about a month in the car. And there are plenty of things to like and a few things to dislike about it. One of the things that I found personally really annoying was the distance to empty indicator. We have the ID4 set at 80% charge limit for just doing normal daily tasks. You're not really supposed to charge to 100% unless you are doing like a long road trip. And even charge to 80%, usually upon unplugging the car, it would say I had a distance to empty about 250, 240 miles of range, which is just way too much. It, it should be less than that. And usually upon unplugging and driving for like 10 miles, it would just go down to like 190 or 200 or something like that. So it just wasn't very accurate. And it was one of the things that would bug me about the RD4 if I owned it and lived with it on a daily basis. It's an interesting car to talk about, uh, and really it's because I'm sure in this video we're going to be discussing the touchscreen interface, and it was just so buggy and annoying that it soured very often the entire driving experience. Although, as I'm actually shooting this video today, we do have the updated software, and it, and it is better, but you kind of have to set that aside, and if you do, when talking about this car, then the rest of it's pretty nice as an EV. Uh, it's comfortable, it's quiet, uh, I always enjoy driving it around town. The turning radius in particular always impressed me how easy it was to make U-turns, so overall, I like the ID4, just the touchscreen interface uh, was a big bummer. Once again, we'll have to wait for those final efficiency numbers, but what I can tell you is that the ID4 did very well on our Edmunds Real World EV range test. The EPA estimated range for this vehicle was only 260 miles, but we were able to get 288 miles in real world conditions. The only maintenance we've had to do on the ID4 is its 10,000 mile service because it came to us with 5,000 miles already on it. EVs don't really go through fluids and things like a gas vehicle might, so it was really just a glorified inspection, but thankfully, Volkswagen covered it as they pay for the first two service visits. We haven't had any accidents or recalls either, so those have been smooth, and our only expense so far has been $20 to replace this rear wiper. Not too shabby. The ID4's strengths of its value and driving experience have held up over its time with us, but then again, our problems with it have as well. The multimedia interface is still hard to use and the user experience is lacking. This ID4 will be taking a field trip later this month to Volkswagen's facility in Southern California, where it's going to get an inspection and an extensive software update that they say should fix some of the issues that we've been having, but who knows? If you want to find out if they were successful, keep an eye out for our wrap-up video and on our long-term blog for the latest updates.